Warning, this video and all other videos on this channel are for entertainment purposes only. The content of this video and all other videos on this channel are the opinions of the creator only and do not constitute legal, trading, investment, or financial advice of any kind. Investing carries a high level of risk and the majority of retail clients lose money. Do not invest in capital unless you understand the risk and you are prepared to lose it all. Hey, hey, hey. What's up, what's up, what's up? Big Kanak. Right, hello and welcome to Camel Finance. I'm your boy Camel and today, today I've got a couple of announcements and a couple of observations that I want to make and then we will get into today's episode as always. So the first announcement is if you're a member of any level, look out for the Ask Me Anything ticker request video. I'm going to try to get that out to you today. The second announcement is I am going to be meeting with Cobra and CPM on Saturday to do this podcast, but CPM has decided to move it over to a fresh channel, which I completely understand. He wants to keep his channel for him and then have the podcast on another channel. So if you're into the long form chats and discussions and podcast type deal, then head over to the What Podcast. It's at w.ot, as you can see, podcast. So go and subscribe there if you're into the long form content. And I think the next episode of me, Cobra, and CPM will be coming out for you guys around 2 or 3 p.m. GMT on Sunday. The next thing I wanted to point out is a couple of observations that I'm making. Okay, in no particular order, I just wanted to point at a couple of things and say, I think it's good, speaking from experience, to be mindful of these things. The first thing is, I'm seeing quite a few people gloating on Twitter. And that's, you know, it's all well and good if you called the lows and things are going in your favor. That's all fine, right? It feels good to get things right, whatever. But the reason I point this out is because I really wanted to suggest to you guys that as we get closer and closer to a true top, and I don't know when that top is, right, it's to be determined. I'm sure you're already well aware of my estimations, my base case scenario. But the closer we get to a top, the more gloating you're going to see, okay? You're also going to see things like people posting screenshots. You're going to see people that are brand new to markets show up to market and start thinking that they're the best trader to ever touch the charts. You're going to see people become insufferable. That's always the way these things work. As we approach tops, as we get closer and closer to seeing the tops come in, we will see more and more people posting screenshots of profit. We will see more and more people gloating. And frankly, Twitter and online in general is going to become quite a nasty place to be. This phase is known as, or what I like to term at least, the everyone's an expert phase, right? And there's a reason for that. And I've mentioned this before, but here it is again, okay? If this is what the stock market looks like and it continues higher, even if it doesn't continue higher, let's just say right in here, okay? If you bought stocks any time at all in the last 12 or 18 months, you will be in profit, okay? Does that make you an expert? No. Does that make you good at trading? No. Does that mean you're not going to give it all back when the market changes trend? No. But what it does mean is right now under these kind of conditions, okay, it does not take a genius to make money in these markets. If you bought something and held it for any more than a few weeks, you're probably in profit. And it's the same deal with Bitcoin, right? Unless you bought somewhere in this neighborhood, okay, any time between about, what was this, October, November of 2022 and today, you would have been in profit. And in fact, okay, this is true all the way back here. You could have bought the top all the way back here, okay, in 2021, anywhere down here. And right now, you're in profit, okay? So don't confuse this as you're really good at trading if you're brand new to markets. Don't confuse this as you know what you're talking about <laughs> just because you could have gotten away with buying literally anywhere from back here in 2021 to today and you will be sat in profit. So again, remember where we are, okay? This is the everyone's an expert phase. This is the easy money environment. Frankly, if you're losing money in this environment, I, I don't know how, okay? It's pretty tough to lose money in this environment. All you had to do is buy something and wait, and it would have put you in profit, okay? Simple as that. And so because of this, there will be a perception amongst particularly the new and inexperienced guys that trading is easy, okay? They're gonna exit the matrix. They're gonna quit their nine to five job because this is just the standard thing that happens. You buy something and it goes up. And all of this leads to people getting very pleased with themselves. It leads to people gloating on the internet. It leads to screenshots of profit. And there's two ways to handle this, okay? The first way is the incorrect way, which is to either be part of that gloating and profit posting, right? 
or to look at that and say, oh man, these guys are making all this money, I need to go up on my size, I need to increase my leverage, that would all be the incorrect way. The correct way to look at this is to say, okay, this is very typical once we approach tops. Once we approach tops, people become insufferable. The rookies think that they are expert traders. And as a result, okay, all of the online stuff, social media will become quite insufferable. So just as an observation, okay, gloating is not cool. Screenshots of profit is not cool. And we should be looking at this stuff as objective observers okay that's the deal so as long as you can be objective as long as you can observe this as long as you can understand not to get caught up in it and understand that the more it happens the closer we probably are to tops then you will put yourself in a massively advantageous position relative to most of the market participants so i just wanted to point that out because like i said i think it's really important we are going to see this place become more and more insufferable and we don't want to get caught up in it we just want to use that as a tool to point out and say okay things are probably getting closer to the end than most people are ready to accept. These rallies across the boards, okay, are still causing all kinds of people to short them, to doubt them. And you have to ask yourself a question if you're in this camp of people, because I know there's a bunch of you keep asking me, Camel, can I cover NVIDIA? Because you want to short NVIDIA, right? And we're going to get to that in a second. But why fight such a powerful trend? Ask yourself this question, okay? Why fight it? Surfers go with the waves. They do not try to impose their will on the ocean, okay? There's no point trying to pick the top when we can just wait for a while, wait for a technical setup, at least wait for trend line breakdowns, wait for something to change to at least give you a reason to short. Don't just be shorting because price has gone up, okay? That is not a good enough reason. We live in these crazy times and these crazy times can see crazy things happen for extended periods of time. So do not try to impose your will on the market. If you have a technical reason and maybe JT does, then that's fine, okay? But don't just be saying to yourself, oh, it's gone up so much it can't possibly go higher. Believe me, it can, and it probably will. And fitting in with this theme, right? NVIDIA looks ridiculously overextended, right? It's so far above its 200 MA. It's a whole bar above the upper Bollinger Band. But that does not mean it can't do this, okay? And if you're trying to short this thing, and it decides to do this, and your entire hypothesis for the short is simply that it can't possibly go higher, well, you're just gonna keep getting scorched. I was doing live streams in this neighborhood, and people were saying, oh, NVIDIA, we're going to short it, we're going to short it. Can you cover NVIDIA? Can we short it? And I was saying, you, you really don't want to do that. There's no technical reason to do so. And you can see what's happened since then. And I'm not saying it will happen. I'm not saying that at all. But for all you know, this is what comes next. So at least wait for a technical reason. At least wait for a true trend reversal to set up before you decide to go short in things for no rhyme or reason other than it seems overbought. And with all of this said, this is still the most hated, most doubted, least understood, most shorted rally of all time. It doesn't actually make any sense, okay? Conviction is still very, very low. And you can see that across the board. And we are therefore likely going a lot higher until morale improves. This is just the way it is. Until people throw in the towel, until this becomes a greedy, euphoric, everyone is bullish, everyone is one-sided market, then we're probably just going to keep climbing higher. A cycle low mid-June is probably the best that the bears can hope for, and then it should be third angle time. I largely agree with what T is saying here, right? Isn't it wild how we're all watching the greatest concentration literally in the stock market history, with Nvidia making up something like 43, 45% of the gains of the S&P? We're watching this thing unfolding day by day, with credit suspended in the air because rates 20x in two years, with no refinancing, job growth is grinding to a fraction of the post-GFC average, and there are still people saying things like, I expect 17% EPS for 2024. We're between no landing and soft landing, the greatest country on earth. And despite them all sounding absolutely crazy when they're saying that up here, okay, after such big moves in the stock market, there is still a non-zero chance they're right. Does anyone else feel like they're in a cartoon? Just T, well, I've got a couple of things to say about this. First of all, usually as we approach tops, breadth narrows, okay? So not really the end of the world there, in my humble opinion, but we're also seeing breadth gradually widen. People tend to look very, very zoomed in at the hard right edge and say, well, there's no breadth to this market, but it is actually improving if you zoom out and make comparisons to six months ago, 12 months ago, so on and so forth. So breadth is gradually widening, and I do think that we will see the Russell 2K continue to move higher. And if that's the case, then, you know, again, we are going to see breadth continue to widen. Other than that, though, T makes a very good point here, right? When you look around, <laughs> you can try and sound smart. You can look around and go, well, what about rates? Rates are too high. Well, what about this? What about that? There's a million reasons to be bearish. But the reality is we are probably going higher, right? This is still the most hated, most doubted, least understood, most shorted rally of all time. Conviction is really, really low. And it doesn't make sense to a lot of people. 
like I said, we are likely going a lot higher until morale improves, okay? Markets don't top when everyone is expecting a top. So does it make sense? No, not really, okay? But does that mean it can't continue? Absolutely not. And again, I say, if you're one of these people that's trying to impose your will on the market, trying to short this thing just because you think it can't go higher, well, realistically, at least from a technical setup, okay, that cycle low that's due mid-June, a couple of weeks' time, is the best you can really hope for. And I don't think we're going to see a 10% correction into that cycle low. We're probably just going to see a couple percent down cycle low. And then it's possibly, possibly third angle time. Okay, that's at least what the weekly cycles are saying. Just be aware, be open to everything. Okay, be on guard for trend reversals by all means. But don't just be short in this thing because you think that everything's overbought. You can see here in the fear and greed index, conviction is really low. And when things are going well for a while, you see a lot of people get bullish, right? You see a lot of gloating, a lot of screenshots of profit, as I was saying earlier. But then we get a tiny little pullback and you get everyone come out of the woodwork again, calling for the end of the world. Well, that must be the top, okay? Time to short this thing. I'm seeing massive accounts online getting blown up because they're going all in on shorting. As ever, you have to treat this like a business, okay? Manage the risk, size your trades correctly. And most importantly, as I said a million times already, don't try to impose your will on the market. It is still a wild time to be alive, don't get me wrong, right? <laughs> I'm so old I can remember when a trillion market cap was a big deal, but now we've got Nvidia at three trillion, Microsoft at over three trillion, Apple at three trillion, okay? These are wild, wild times to be alive. But again, don't make the mistake of thinking that just because these charts have gone parabolic, they haven't got more legs left in them. Moving on to Bitcoin and the crypto space, I showed this yesterday and I said, look, the amount of engagement on YouTube is significantly lower than this. And so perhaps if we see a spike here, could it be indicative retailer coming back to the market? Might be a nice metric to keep an eye on. And the reason I wanted to point this out is another metric that I think is really, really useful is where Coinbase ranks in the app store. For finance, you can see it is the number 15 out of 17. So Coinbase is by no means anywhere close to being the most downloaded app, let alone the most downloaded financial app. Again, indicative that we are not yet at the top there is still probably a much bigger leg to come and retail is nowhere near here. Again, I've been saying over and over again, I'm not convinced retail are coming back anywhere near the level they did before, but that's to be determined. Anyway, you might want to follow this Coinbase app rank bot if you're the sort of person like me that wants to track this thing and start to see if we build into a FOMO driven bubble right around the time that this thing starts to climb to the number one downloaded app in the app store. As of yesterday, the Bitcoin ETFs took 888 million. It's the second biggest day of inflows since its launch. So you can see that right here. Okay, that is the kind of thing you want to see on a breakout to new all time highs. Again, speaks to probably having more legs in this rally. And at the same time, what part of the cycle is this when Jim Grammer is asking Gary Gensler if we should have a bonk ETF on CNBC? <laughs> yeah. The proprietary kind of I would think that bonk is a natural and osmosis. These are trading millions, Garrett, these are millions of dollars these things are trading. Shouldn't we have it? Shouldn't so, we have some sort of product? So should we have a product for Bonk? I, I don't know. I never thought they'd get the ETF for Ethereum approved. They did, right? So whatever, whatever. Anyway, ETFs on everything. Why not? Nesty here saying that it might well be time, okay? Fasten your seatbelts. And you can see that here. Looking to break out. Now, again, I've been saying until I see a decisive weekly close above the prior all-time high, I'm not going to be championing this move to price discovery just yet, but things are looking encouraging at the hard right edge. So until we actually break, I can't really say to myself, okay, happy days. But having said that, unless I do see an immediate rollover, okay, then I remain cautiously optimistic that something like this is possibly coming next for Bitcoin. And there's an interesting Bitcoin model here, okay, dynamic power model. You can see we're actually right on track around the middle. And this says that by the end of September, we could be somewhere around 120K for Bitcoin, something like this. Okay, that would be quite nice. And if this cycle continues for longer than I'm expecting it to and has a more typical sort of right translated cycle that we're used to seeing from Bitcoin, then could we be looking at a 300 plus thousand dollar Bitcoin by the end of 2025? Is that on the table? I would love nothing more to see this, but unfortunately, I think, as I'm sure you probably know if you've been following me for any length of time, we're probably gonna see something more like this. That's what I think. And then back like this. So anyway, we're gonna find out one day at a time as always. So. Getting into the charts, is Bitcoin going to do Bitcoin things? Okay, let me move this fractal out of the way. Is this something like this coming in the not too distant future? We're going to find out, like I said, until it rolls over, then I remain cautiously optimistic. The crypto stocks, crypto equities showing some strength, starting to look very, very bullish. Some of them are even breaking out significantly. So 
happy days, right? Let's see. Let's see. One day at a time as always. The dollar, DXY, is still closing multiple candles below support. Again, cycle low in focus, but the longer it stays under here, the more significant it becomes. Happy days. Also, that catchphrase, tell it to the bond market. If I draw a little line under here, okay, is this not breakdown, retest, possible resumption lower? If we flip into the US two-year yield, okay, what do you see? So far, right off of support, looking for maybe a capture and bounce and a rollover. And if you know, you know, okay? So, oh, higher for longer? No, tell that to the bond market. If you don't know what I'm talking about, go back and watch last Saturday's video, The Weekend's Deep Dive, or stay tuned, hit the subscribe button, come back and check this Saturday's Weekend Deep Dive video. We're gonna be going over this again in full detail because this is the signal, as I've been saying over and over again. This is the signal. And this is something the market keeps getting wrong, right? Again, I say, tell it to the bond market. Meanwhile, gold looks to be working on a cycle low, happy days. So a little bit more follow through. And then I think the stop loss can come up underneath that cycle low. That becomes the final line in the sand. And I'll be looking to get the members out of all the gold and mining positions somewhere in this neighborhood. This is what I'm thinking, right? Something like this, get the members out, cycle low, weekly cycle low, boom. And then we can get back to reallocating down here. So for now, encouraging signs. And speaking of encouraging signs, silver back above that critical $30 level for now at least. So was that just a stop run? Are we gonna see this run back turbo? Actually, my eye has just been drawn to this. I wonder if that was just a perfect touch of support, uh, roughly speaking. I'll take it, right? All the while we're above the $30 level though, that is the one I wanna focus on. So above 30, bullish as a son of a gun. Speaking of bullish as a son of a gun, okay? Look at this, I was talking about this. I've been talking about this every day, okay? Until morale improves, we're gonna keep going higher. Until these bears become panic buyers, then we're gonna keep going higher. And like I said, the signs are starting to creep in. You know, we're seeing those people flexing. We're seeing people gloating. We're seeing people saying, I told you so. And that's all part of it. That's all part of it. And like I said, just be a, a trader, a professional about it. Be someone that uses that to your advantage. Observe that. Don't give your energy to it. Don't allow a polarity to grab you in and pull you in and take your energy because that's what this place likes to do. So instead, be an objective observer. And when we're objectively observing, okay, there is nothing bearish about this, nothing. We've got a full daily and weekly cycle. We are probably gonna do something like this, I would imagine, into a cycle low. And then we might be looking for that third and final angle, as you know, okay? At least, at least can't be bearish until we start to lose this upward slope and support line. And even if we did, you know, once we find this cycle low, wherever it is, until we fail the cycle, okay, then there's no implied downside. This is just the reality of the situation. So don't be a silly duck trying to short everything, okay? Long and strong continue to push until morale improves. Look at the Dow, okay? Trying to recover its trend line, happy days. So we'll see, long and strong there. And again, look at the NASDAQ, okay? What, you're bearish here. It doesn't make any sense. It doesn't make any sense. Wait for a cycle low pullback, get to full exposure. That's my plan. And then again, we'll be looking for third angles. Meanwhile, VIX suppression continuing, okay? That's what we've been expecting. Happy days, right? Obviously, there's gonna be counter trend bounces along the way, but ultimately, we're probably gonna get down to somewhere around eight by the time we reach the top of the blow-off top, and then it will be VIX o'clock. And kind of fitting in with what I was saying earlier about the Russell 2K, right? Unless this thing breaks down, unless it loses its range break in blue, unless it loses the upper slope in red support, okay? Then it's, again, malpractice to be bearish here. And if it's malpractice to be bearish, that implies bullishness. If we've got implied bullishness, that implies, that means breadth is probably gonna continue to widen. Again, none of this makes any sense, okay? Breadth should not be widening towards tops, but this is not a normal time to be a trader. This is the end of multi-decade cycles. Whether I end up being right about the top when I expect it to be, whether I end up being a couple of months late, or whether I end up being 18 months late, doesn't really matter, okay? We're gonna ride this trend until we find a secular top, and then when we do, it is GG's. And again, if we pull up the melt-up chart just one more time to finish here, okay? Take a look at this. <laughs> Take a look at this. It's starting to look an awful lot like a blow-off top, isn't it? It's starting to look like it probably wants to find a cycle low and set a third angle. So we're gonna find out. And one last idea is that we will also be looking for a third angle to come in on Bitcoin in the not too distant future, something along these lines, okay? Again, not a very popular idea. It could change and it can change quickly, but until it changes, long and strong continue to push i'm your boy camel i hope you're doing well in life if you're a member of any level look out for the ask me anything and the ticker request i'm about to put out for you guys for everyone else thank you for being here especially if you made it all the way through this episode to the end and in the meantime i hope you're doing well in life take care from me all the best cheers bye the usual sir please It's
with his contrarian spree.